the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam, takes place tomorrow night from Detroit, Michigan. The very first WWE premium live event or pay-per-view, whatever you want to call it, since WrestleMania 23, I believe. So let's get right into the predictions for the actual show. And to my surprise, there's about seven to eight matches, a very small card, but not unattractive. So with that said, let's get right into the most important match, the most attractive match. Can Jey Uso, can main event Jey Uso defeat the Tribal Chief in Tribal Court and become WWE Undisputed Universal Champion? Can Jey Uso finally vanquish Roman Reigns, his cousin, the man who has manipulated him, who has uh, beaten him down physically and emotionally so many times in the past that at this point, all the people watching at home, everyone in the arena, it doesn't matter if you're in if you're in Ford Field, I, I believe that's still the name of the actual stadium, or if you're going to be watching at home from the, from the States or from any part in the world, everyone wants to see Jey Uso beat Roman Reigns and become undisputed champion. Not only that, if he does that, if he achieves something that hasn't been accomplished, something that hasn't been achieved in three and a half years, if he beats Roman Reigns, if he pins Roman Reigns in a singles match for the world's championship, the undisputed universal championship, he will be making history above an edge, above a Daniel Bryan, above Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, John Cena, Finn Balor, Cesaro, and so many more in the past that have failed. Can he do it? Of course, of course he can do it. He proved it last month at Money in the Bank when he teamed with his brother Jimmy. And they were able to defeat Sol Sokol and Roman Reigns in a tag team match and pin the Tribal Chief himself. So it absolutely can be done. But the real question is, will it happen? Will it be done? Can Jey Uso beat Roman Reigns? Will it happen? Will WWE book Jey Uso to be the champion now? At this moment in time. Because everything leading into SummerSlam makes it feel like the absolute perfect moment to put the championship on Jay Uso. The, the, the fans want it. Even though they keep selling out events, selling out venues, the audience sticks around on a weekly basis for both Raw and SmackDown. Normally after summer, heading into fall, right before the Royal Rumble uh, and WrestleMania season, that's when WWE tends to experiment a lot with their stars. And who gets to be on top? Who gets to be the world champion? Who gets to be the main eventer? So it absolutely can happen. But if it were up to me, you know, you already know what I'm going to say. Roman Reigns once again retains his championship at SummerSlam. He wins Tribal Court. He retains the title because in my mind, this historic feud between, excuse me, this historic run from Roman Reigns can end only on the grandest stage of them all, which is WrestleMania. And it doesn't matter at this point against who it ends. I'm hoping it's Cody Rhodes, Seth freaking Rollins, somebody. It could end against either of those two men or, or somebody else they, that they are able to build up to get to that point. But to me, this title reign has to end at WrestleMania. And unfortunately... My storyline uh, reasoning for this is Jey Uso pinned Roman Reigns at Money in the Bank, but he had his brother at his side in a tag team match in his uh, in his playground. They played in tag, under tag team rules. The Usos won because they are one of the best tag teams of all time for WWE. Now. Tribal Court, singles, singles match, main event of a major pay-per-view. This is Roman Reigns' playground. This is the Tribal Chiefs' playground. Tribal Court. 
and Roman Reigns will still walk out as champion. I know it's an unpopular opinion, and like I said, if you absolutely were ever going to have this transition, if you if you were ever going to put the championship on Jey Uso, right now, everything leading up to this moment, everything building up to this moment, it would be right now at SummerSlam. But this could be a deja vu moment. We already saw this heading into WrestleMania. Cody Rhodes was primed to finish his story and beat Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, and it did not happen. So with that said, those are my thoughts. Those are my predictions on Tribal Court. The most attractive, the most awaited match for SummerSlam. So I just had to get that out of the way. Love Jey Uso. I really wish he would beat Roman Reigns. And I, honestly, if he did beat Roman Reigns, I wouldn't be pissed or anything like that about it. But, you know, WWE tends to keep their stars on top. And like I said, WrestleMania seems like the absolute best stage to end Roman Reigns' historic championship reign. Now, with that said, let's go into the rest of the show. Now, the World's Heavyweight Championship is on the line. Seth frickin' Rollins defends his championship against Finn Balor. A rematch of seven years ago when Finn Balor beat Seth frickin' Rollins to become the first ever Universal Champion in WWE history. And unfortunately, Finn Balor got injured in that match. He had to vacate the title, and that's played into the story leading, leading into this match. It has eaten away at Finn Balor for seven years at this point. It has been seven years coming that Finn Balor not only needs to become world champion, but he needs to beat Seth freaking Ron because he was unable to do it at Money in the Bank. A few distractions from his Judgment Day uh partner in Damian Priest? Yes. But I've but I've talked about this at length in the past. The problems within Judgment Day will continue no matter what happens, no matter who walks out the winner of this match. Seth Freakin' Rollins walks out the world champion, Damian Priest can cash in, he can become the world champion, and, he, and then he'll not only hold the world title above above Seth Rollins, but he'll hold it above Finn Balor as well. Issues right then and there. Finn Balor walks out world champion. Damian Priest has the Money in the Bank briefcase. Damian Priest, senior Money in the Bank, will always be a threat to Finn Balor, even if they are both members of the same stable. That's just a given when it comes to WWE. That's just a given when it comes to to professional wrestling. And the third option, Seth Freakin' Rollins retains, no cash-in, and he goes on to the following weeks on Monday Night Raw. Damian Priest will have that, that briefcase looming over Finn Balor. Hey, he said it himself a few weeks ago on Raw. The title is guaranteed to go to Judgment Day whether Finn Balor wins it or not because he has the briefcase. And that's obviously going to hurt Finn Balor's ego. And just like I said a few minutes ago, after summer, Heading into fall is the perfect time for WWE to experiment with new guys at the top. And you can't have, and to be honest, you can't really have an era in WWE where you, you, you have both Jey Uso and Damian Priest as your top world champions on both brands. I don't think that's going to happen. So if either man has a chance, Damian Priest is going to be world heavyweight champion sooner rather than later. But for the match right now, at SummerSlam, I'm going to go on a loom. Finn Balor walks out with the championship, and, now, and that'll just make it even more interesting to see. Finn Balor heading even into even more fantastic matches with Seth freaking Rollins on Raw and pay-per-views. But again, Damian Priest looming in the background. That threat will forever exist as long as he has the briefcase. Finn Balor becomes a new World Heavyweight Champion. The third main event... For SummerSlam, Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar, and again, I still can't. We're 20, we're less than 24 hours away, or something like that, away from SummerSlam, and this match has no stipulation. It's a rubber match. It's a singles match. It's a one-on-one -on -one match. It's a straight-up match. Again, this match needs a stipulation. WWE decided against it. And again, this 
Even if Cody Rhodes walks out with the win, which I do think Cody Rhodes will beat Brock Lesnar no matter what. Cody Rhodes needs to win this feud hands down. Even if he does win, Cody Rhodes is not next in line for the World Heavyweight Championship. Because if Finn Balor walks out the World Champion, Seth has a rematch, Damian Priest is Mr. Money in the Bank. Cody Rhodes is third, fourth in line for the title. Again, his story needs to be finished against Roman Reigns, in my opinion, if anything at all. So with that said, Cody Rhodes walking out with the win against Brock Lesnar against the Beast. It doesn't hurt the Beast. It puts Cody Rhodes over the top. He can beat main event players like Brock Lesnar and eventually reach the pinnacle and become world champion. I just wish it had a stipulation. What can you do? Triple threat match for the WWE Women's Championship. Asuka defends against Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair. And again, another topic that I've talked about in the, fa in the past few days. Very interesting. Very interesting because, again, I feel like they're building to Charlotte Flair versus Bianca Belair, a match worthy of WrestleMania, both in character and when it comes to the in-ring product itself. So, at this moment in time, I don't think you can put the championship on Charlotte Flair. Especially if it's going to be a transitional title reign. And like I said, I don't think I think Finn Balor walks out with the title at SummerSlam. Damian Priest doesn't cash in, but Io Sky does cash in. And unfortunately, Asuka has been her character has been pretty much an afterthought. Even though she's a champion, she's been an afterthought on SmackDown. She's been an afterthought in this entire feud, in this entire rivalry. And unfortunately. I have a feeling WWE Creative will continue in its ways. Asuka will get pinned by Bianca Belair. Belair becomes a champion. And Io Sky cashes in. So we get a brand new women's champion in Io Sky. And that takes Charlotte Flair completely out of the picture. For now. Which will lead us to Charlotte Flair. Maybe winning a women's rumble match. Uh, next year. Again, I'm just spitballing here. But it seems to me like. We might have a new champion, and then Io Sky cashes in. We got to get rid of one of the briefcases for the next coming uh, weeks, months uh, of WWE TV. I'm going with that. Ricochet versus Logan Paul, one-on-one -on -one match. Again, a pretty easy uh, match to predict, simply because I don't feel like WWE has any plans, any future plans, any immediate plans for Ricochet after SummerSlam. He's not going to challenge for the Intercontinental Championship. So if, so that's a championship he can attain at this point in his character work, in his career. So if he's not going to do that, there's no point in having Ricochet win. Logan Paul gets the win, even though if he loses, it doesn't really hurt his character. But again, if you don't have any immediate plans for Ricochet, there's no point in having him win. Logan Paul walks out with the win. A match I am surprisingly very interested in because not only is it MMA rules, but it's two best friends feuding amongst each other. Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler in under MMA rules. And there are rumors that Ronda Rousey might be taking a step back from WWE in the in the next few weeks, in the next few months. Help. It can be an even longer hiatus. So if that is the case, Shayna Baszler needs to win this hands down. And if you ask me, Shayna Baszler and or Becky Lynch should be challenging Mommy, Rhea Ripley, for the WWE Women's World Championship in the very, very near future to really spice up that title picture on Monday Night Raw. So Shayna Baszler gets the win in this MMA rules match. Ronda Rousey might take a hiatus or this feud might be a little bit longer than we thought. Again, it just... I feel like Ronda Rousey is leaving because it really didn't make sense to have him break up. Because the tag team division and the women's division is very, very small. So, I'm just spitballing there. I'm just throwing that out there. And finally, Gunther versus Drew McIntyre for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, normally, under normal circumstances, I would say, Drew McIntyre just returned at Money in the Bank. He should become Intercontinental Champion. He is a former world champion. He is a main event player in WWE. There is nothing... Nothing against having Drew McIntyre beat Gunther and become Intercontinental Champion. Once again, we've seen it 
in the past, since 2009, that epic run when he was, when he was just a young up-and-comer. But, but, Gunther is, Gunther is about 30, 40 days away from breaking the Honky Tonk Man's record. As longest intercontinental, intercontinental champion of all time. So he will not lose. He will not be losing to Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam. He will not lose that championship 100%. He will not lose it. They cannot have him lose this close to him breaking that record. Just like Roman Reigns. Just like WWE had with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. So close to the actual thousand days as champion. They did not have him lose. And he broke that record epic moment on WWE TV. I think that's exactly what WWE is building towards with Gunther as Intercontinental Champion. So, and down the line, Drew McIntyre might beat him, but for now, for SummerSlam, for tomorrow night, Gunther, the ring general, walks out still Intercontinental Champion. And I know there's a Slim Jim SummerSlam Battle Royal. It's a Battle Royal. I, other than the Royal Rumble match itself, I have never liked these kinds of matches, so I'm just going to Throw out one name out there, and that's it. And the winner of the Slim Jim SummerSlam Battle Royal, it's going to be, of course, with everybody saying it, L.A. Knight. Yeah. So with that said, those are my predictions for SummerSlam tomorrow night in Detroit, Michigan. I'm expecting a hell of a show. It's the biggest party of the summer. It's, 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 Wrestle, it's, it's summer's WrestleMania. So with that said, what are your thoughts? What are your predictions for tomorrow night's show? Go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. So with that said, I'm Alexis Carrillo. This has been Wrestling Talk. Tune in later on tonight to Fox for the go-home show of SmackDown heading into SummerSlam. And I'll see you next time.